the world. If you want better player, better players, you need better coaches. It's not my idea. It is just the fact. If you want better players, you need better coaches. Andrew is the top. Is the reason why I'm so happy to work with him because we are. I believe we are very close together, and uh, we, have the, we have the same philosophy, we have the same ideas. So I just help him maybe to be more structured, to bring my experience uh, with UEFA, with FIFA, with Liverpool, with the French FA. So and it's so open-minded, so curious. <laughs> we could we could talk for hours, but yeah, he's brilliant because yeah. He has, he has a passion of football, he was an excellent player, he's an excellent coach and uh, I help, I use him a lot to help me, <laughs> you know, and uh, no, no, Andrew is, is really a nice guy but also a very good uh, uh, coach. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bascom's Corner. You know, this is a special show. This is a special show celebrating the great memories of Jacques Cavassier, you know, Jacques is one of Europe's most high like profile coaching figures and a young man that that had great you know influence on Liverpool FC you know in the recent years but also you're talking about an expert coach and mentor not only that is that and he traveled so much is that had a great connection to Bermuda a great connection to our Bermuda culture, our great connection to developing Bermuda football. So today what I wanted to do is kind of get to share. And I got, you know, three young men on. Yeah, young men on that is going to help us through this journey and kind of really get a feel of who Jacques was, you know, what it looked like uh, when they was around them. So I have Coach Carl Roberts, who actually coaches in Bermuda, also played for the national program. Uh, Coach Aaron Lugo, also a part of the national program, uh, played a lot of football, so it's a pleasure to have have them as coaches on. And also a young man that's actually was a part of my development in my career and my brother, Andrew, is very close to Jacques. Uh, Larry, you know, Mr. Larry Smith, Kaki Smith, we called him. And my brother, Andrew, could not be on. So, guys, it's a pleasure having you here. How's everybody doing? Good evening, David. Thanks for having us on. Uh, Good. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to jump straight to you because it's so important that if we're looking to share and get to know somebody, I know you had that personal relationship. My question for you is that what was your personal relationship like and what stands out the most? I think it, it really began um, during my first C license or the first C license. And Jocks issued us our, our sessions. And Jacques believed in the books that he wrote. The session must come from his book. Well, I did my first session from his book. And then my second session, I did from Larry's knowledge. And midway through the session, Jacques stopped and Larry, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and I says, well, I'm doing this session. So he admonished me. He was angry, actually. He said, that's not in my book. <laughs> and I says, well, I know it's not in your book. So he calmed down because he was angry. And then he says, the session is too advanced for a C license. Mm. And so he called me aside and says that you look very advanced and um, I'm going to promote you to the B license. And I'm going to ask you, can you be an assessor? for the C license course. And of course, that's the beginning of me being an assessor, uh, a football assessor on all of the C license courses thereafter. Um, we went to, to, I think Carl was with us, we went to France, uh, not France, Scotland for our B license. The, we're now advancing to the B license. We completed that in Bermuda. And we're doing the B license. And when you looked again, I think Carl could remember, there was Jacques. He suddenly showed up because he, he had a big support for people. Wow. And and we looked around and we see Jacques. And so what's Jacques doing here? And we got to talk. And he says, oh, I came out to support you guys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thereafter, um, we, we just formed a good relationship. And the next time I really saw Jacques, other than the C license, is that 
got invited to France and Switzerland on a co for coach education with Scotty Morton, Derek Stapley, and myself. And that's where the intimacy with Jocks began. Took us to his house. We had a meal, and for those who drank, they had drinks. And then he took us around France, and then we went over the border to Switzerland. And he took us to the headquarters of, of UEFA. He knows everybody. He took us to the headquarters of UEFA, and um, we chatted, and we chatted, and, and then we went back to France. And he took us to a very few places. Uh, he took us to an academy and showed us what an a football academy is really all mm. about. And and, um, and then from there, um, I just happened to see Jock just about every time he came to Bermuda because being the retired guy, I was the one that always collected from the airport yeah. <laughs> and, and took him to his hotel. And we just, we just, we just became very, very close. Mm. Uh, he met Donna, my wife, and they chatted. And, and the thing about Jocks, the thing about Jocks is the fact that his, his knowledge was so great that you could not help but to, to listen to him. And, and sometimes I regretted picking him up because he just wouldn't shut up from the time he got <laughs> in the car until the time I dropped him off. <laughs> but it, it was just, it was just like, he just fed you. Yeah. And, and you have to listen. You couldn't put the radio on the car or nothing like that because, you know, that little French English that he has, you know, sometimes you don't know what he's saying. I used to say to him, Jax, I don't know what you're saying, but I guess it's right. <laughs> <laughs> and he would laugh and he'd say, what you, what you, what you mean? I said, well, I don't know what you're saying. You won't stop talking. I can't get a word in. And, and we would laugh all the way to his hotel. And, and and then and then this thing that I felt so pleased to know that he actually trusted me to be his assessor when he came to Bermuda. And then obviously we included other people. Andrew became an assessor and and eventually Jock says, Okay, you stop doing the sessions. Um, I'm gonna cool out. He he sat on the bench and he says, Everybody that has to do a session they do it out of this book and they have to come to myself now to make sure that the best session they should be doing. And so I was, I was pleased that he entrusted me, mm. entrusted me to explain the session to the candidates and, 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 uh, and also assist the, the, the assessors. We didn't have to worry about Andrew because Andrew is top of the, you know, top of the, top of the list. It's, but there were some new assessors that we included. And, yeah. and so he also wanted me to assist uh, those coaches when they were summing up the session to make sure the session was summed up properly, et cetera, et cetera. And then we just became good friends. He would call and he said, Letty, what are you doing? Uh, he never called me Larry because he couldn't get it out. He said, Letty, <laughs> and, and, and what are you doing? And, and uh, he'll say, uh, is this night? And I'm saying, Jax wants to go out and have some booze and I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Is this when Roberts got to meet him? Is this when Carl Roberts I, got to meet him? <laughs> Was that the time Roberts got to meet him? I, I actually got to meet him a few years prior to that. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks to the assistance of um, Henrik Schroeder and, and Andrew Bascom. Uh, we actually, and Andrew, myself, and John Barry Newsom actually went to France. And we uh, went to a couple club teams and got right into club teams to see exactly how they trained and, you know, how they trained the senior players as well as the youth, youth players. Um, and then we actually went to Clairefontaine, you know, which was a, a, a tremendous experience for us, you know, um, and just getting to see uh, youth national teams train at the time. It wasn't any senior players there at the time, but uh, we saw youth players training uh, up at the top youth players of France's top youth players training at Clairefontaine at the time. You know, so that whole experience with Jocks and um, getting to see that level of, of football and that training was, was tremendous for us, you know. That is awesome. And you mentioned Claire Fontaine. Is that the same? It was more like the academy, right? That Andre, all the top players came out. Yes. Um, Aaron, I want to ask you, when you first met up, because I'm sure it was similar through the coaching, 
sessions. Um, what was your first impression? You, you know, impression because you know when we're going through these development and you're also an educator. What was your first impression of Jacques? Well, I obviously met him uh, through Coach Bascom before I met him visually. So you always mm -hmm. heard stories about people. It was like, you know, when he comes, this is how he is. So I was being prepared to meet him. So when I met him, it was like, wow, this is exactly what, what they said about him. Uh, broken English, um, explaining football, very passionate. Uh, believed what he said, loved football to the point where everything he talked about was football. Uh, and like Coach Larry said, out of the book. If you want to pass, do it out of the book. I've made it, he's made it so simple for us to understand or how to deliver these sessions to young people. I don't want to see that you know how to coach. I just want to see that you can do the sessions that are in the book. So as, as you was able to do that, you was on his good side. You know, Coach Lyre was actually, when I went through the coach's handbook that he had developed, the one thing that I really was impressed with is that he, the high interest of understanding our culture and climate before you step on the field, right? There was so much. What I, what I really love when I was reading it is that it took so much interest in the country, right? It took so much interest from even, I'm huge on data. He collected so much data that that handbook, it makes it easier for us to understand how to relate to the young person, how to coach the young person. And that's what impressed me. Uh, coach, like, if, you know, I never really got to meet him. If you was to kind of, like to share something with me or for somebody who hadn't met him you know what would you say is character what's that character what will be like you're telling me because you know we're talking about some awesome memories like what would you say to me for somebody who never really got a chance to experience them I, I would say that the moment you met jocks he'll give you this handshake and it's almost like it's almost like as soon as you open your mouth, because everything about it was football. That was his passion. That was his entire life. And, and, and he, he, he was so friendly. He's super friendly. He embraced just about everybody. There was no, you know, he, you know how some people like to, to gravitate towards people who have status. Jacques just embraced everybody and all the coaches all the candidates, Jacks embraced everybody. So from the time you would start talking about Jacks and you, Jacks is going to ask you what you did. And as soon as you start talking football, Blue, you better you better look at your watch and set it and see how much time <laughs> you have got because he would milk you. Mm. Because and, and I know the type of person you are, you and Jacks would probably be together all day. Yeah. Inter because well, I I'm sure that him and my brother Andrew had some long conversations. Oh my goodness! Geez. Because he is another one that there is no time on him. We may tell we have some meetings, right? I just want to share. We have meetings it's supposed to be one hour, and when we get into football content, so I can just imagine from what you're saying, right? Oh, we go over, and and, and I told the group after an hour and a half, two hours, it's happy hour. Oh yeah, it's happy hour. We're just gonna we're just gonna ride this one out. But you know what's awesome is that, and just from talking to Andrew about Jax, it's so much passion. He felt like his football, like that that like his his vote was taken away. Yeah, when, when he, he just felt like his vote was taken away. And you know, as coaches and and Larry, as co what we do is that when we are progressive, we strive for more. As long as we continue learning it becomes that it could stay as a career. And that's what I know, like my brother was talking about, that's where he felt it's kind of like, wow, now he's got to find his, his other learning partner, you know? So I'm, so I'm really hoping that he, he gets that connection. Um, guys, I want to ask you, you know, um, especially with Roberts and, and Aaron, with your coaching and when you went through them, you had your own coaching styles, right? You had your way of coaching, your way of engaging and, and connecting. What, is, what are one of the things, Roberts, that when you came out of his session that you felt that you had to change with your coaching? I, like, was there anything that triggered, like, was it like organizational pieces that helped support your coaching? 
But the B license, um, especially, especially the B license, was was based off of you know just organization. You know, um, planning your session from a warm up um, to uh, passing sequences and building it up to a game scenario, phase of play and whatnot. So the whole structure of, of sessions was was quite uh, a learning tool for us. You know, um, from from to coaching how we used to coach to learning how a uh, UA for B license session should run, you know? So the A for B license, we were talking about just for um, some people there who, who really, so the coach in the US, you have your licenses uh, that's gonna range from from your D, your E, all the way up to your B, your A. Uh, UEFA is is one of the highest standard licenses and Roberts and Aaron, if I'm, and please correct me, you guys have your B license UEFA and you went through that pathway, right? Jux was a pathway for you. Now, and, and I'm just asking this question. I know there's many uh, UEFA B license coaches. So Jux actually had a huge, a huge part to play in developing our coaches. You know, Aaron, was is, is that correct? Like, what's the structure there? Uh, was it something or, or that you could probably talk about? And I don't know, because I know this is probably more for the coaching association, but was there like every year the Jux would come down uh, and, and run these like pre- you know, pre-license, you had to go to Scotland, right? You had to go overseas for your B license. Like, did he do any pre-courses? Well, it's mandatory that you have to do the C license first. Yes, okay. So, and and Bermuda has gotten on board to make it mandatory for all clubs to have licensed coaches when dealing with youth football. Okay. So, and that's the big impact that Coach Bascom and, and Coach Jacques had, is that to understand how to have a session at the youth level and then it progressed to how to have a session at the senior level. You know, it's all well and good that you watch football on TV and you say, that's my team and I know how to play. But to actually, how to make football impactful to a person or how to make sure that you get the most out of everyone in your session, that's what these sessions did for me. Um, and it's not every year, but it was on a schedule. It's like every other year because the relationship that Bermuda had with the Scotland, Scottish Association of when these licenses can be administered. But the C license was more more often than the B license. And Coach Larry, as an assessor, he definitely um, was at every C and B license just to make sure that the um, Coaches Association was doing their part and showing their face. Larry, Larry uh, you know, I have to ask this because now we're getting into that that accountability, right? What, I'm so what it sounds like they, he had a, a strong accountability, uh, strong standards. Did you feel intimidated in any way at some point? And and did he share something with you like uh, that made you uncomfortable? Where you know we say that I tell you want to be great leaders, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Was you put in that? Did he ever put you in that that space or situation? Because to be an upset, you know, like to assess, had I, I mean that's huge. The, is is it any moments that you can think of that it's like, all right, I gotta fix this, I gotta sort this out, yeah, because it's coming on me. Because that's a great like like accomplishment for me is that all of a sudden we have a, a man like Jacques coming there, and now I'm working under him, yeah. Well, well, David, I think I only had one uncomfortable situation, and that is when I did my second session mm. outside of his book. And he's, he's, he's got such great pride. And I, under, and I understood him because he, you know, he takes all this time to write the books and write the sessions. And here is a guy coming and has done a session, albeit good, but has done a session that does not relate to my book. And and that's where he, he really turned me off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looked at the session and we asked, we asked some questions of each other. And um, and I said, well, Jocks, the session is not of your book, but it relates to one of the sessions in the book. I just defined it in my own mindset okay. as to how the session should go. And that's when he decided that this guy is too advanced for the C license. Was there- So, so oh. I actually got graduated Oh. as a candidate for the B license, because you have to pass the C license. What is it, 80%, you guys? You yeah, you have to get at least 80% to get to, to be yeah, a, you have to, considered you have to pass the, the B license. Yeah, you have to pass the C license 
at 80%. And because I didn't complete the C license, I just obviously, he just gave me an 80%. And um, outside of that, we, we never had any, any um, it, situations whereby I would feel uncomfortable with him because now I became, I became one of his, Andrew and myself became one of his, one or two of his uh, number one and two assessors. And that, and that helped him to relax a little bit because, you know, he's got to go to each and every candidate to explain this, explain that. And then he's now found two guys that he can trust and trust to explain the session to the candidate and then and watch the, the and, and assess the candidate. So, so no, I never felt uncomfortable. In fact, you guys don't realize Jackson and I are the same age. So he must, he must have said, well, this is, this is, this is my equal. Yeah. Well, I didn't know you was the same. I, I didn't realize that. Jacques yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well, that, that solves it, right? That, uh, Coach Aaron, that's, that's why you had a little struggle getting on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> trying to blame everybody that else. Technology, <laughs> technology. <laughs> and, and, and David, and David, you know, the last time Josh was here, uh, picked him up at the airport. He didn't want to go to the place that he usually goes, and and um, we just always want to give him the best because he gave us his best. Mm. And so we took him to a nice little place on Harbor Road. Look, looked over the ocean, etc., etc., and when I picked him up that day after the course to go back to France, you know, never thought of my wildest dreams that 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 would be the last time I would I would see Jocks. And and when I when I found the news out, man, I was I was heartbroken. Now I could imagine. Yeah, I mean, heartbroken. Of course, the same old thing. Picked him up. We just chatted all the way to the airport. He likes to get there early. Dropped him off. I'm saying, I'm going to park the car. Come back. And then, uh, yeah, at the airport, now let you go and do what you have to do. Mm. And uh, there you have it, Jocks. You know, and, and, and that's the thing, right? And that's why it's, it's so important that we get to share, right? We share because... One great thing about when we're looking at uh, social media and the internet technology, this this will stay with us. This is something, right? This is something. Was there, um, you know, and Roberts and Aaron, I'm looking at the amount of, I think, if I'm correct, we have a, a large amount of UA for B licensed coaches in Bermuda. And, and I'm sure that, you know, this will continue to develop the coaches. Uh, when you look at I look at Jax as just from my hearing and all the information that I've gathered as a strong leader. Um, did you get a chance to share any like moments with from outside of the coaching sessions or certificates? Like, did, did you get a chance to kind of uh, just to kind of even have a conversation with from outside? And if so, like, what was it like? And if you didn't, what would be knowing the circumstances, knowing that everything ain't now, what would you ask him? Or, or, or even that, was it is this a question that you feel that you would like to have asked him? Yeah, like just to kind of for your information as for what we know right now. Well, the um, Bermuda versus Mexico match, um, he was on the island and the association had a, a section for all of the uh, coaches that were going to do the B license. Actually, it wasn't Mexico. I think it was Panama. We was in the stand sitting together watching the match and Jacques came up and sat behind us. And I was like, oh, grinning like he sat behind me, you know, because <laughs> because he, he is a world renowned coach. Yeah. Right. And it's one thing to to be on the on the pitch. And his assessing you versus him sitting in the stands with you. And it's, oh, did you see? Did you see? And we're just talking football and he's tapping you on your shoulder and he's pointing at, well, he should move. He should, t and, and you're discussing the game with him. So just like Larry, when I heard that he passed, 
I tell people it's like it's like I lost a friend. Mm. And even though I never picked him up from the airport or shared any uh, experiences overseas with him, but whenever you was in his presence, it was football, and you knew what you was getting. The best out of him. He was talking about it, and if you had any questions, you could ask. Feel free. Um, with Coach Bascom and uh, Mr. Schroeder, they have an office on Front Street, and whenever Henrik, was, uh, whenever um, Jacques was in, they will call a meeting for all the ABC coaches to come down and talk whatever you want, ask whatever you want, anything. And he was on the whiteboard just writing and talking about formations and do this, do this, do this. So you had your feel whenever he was in about football. So I, I enjoyed every experience whenever he was in one island. That's awesome. Robert, anything anything that connects to you? Yeah, David, um, um, just, his, just his passion, of course, and, and, and the accent and and he's just willing to share everything that his his knowledge about the game, uh, his knowledge about psychology of players and whatnot. So just his uh, just his presence and 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 his unwillingness to share his, his knowledge of, of the game and whatnot, and to further your education. You know, it was just a, a a pleasure just to be around him and whatnot. And and just like these guys, you know, um, just to hear that he, he had passed was, you know, it was devastating. You know, no, that's that's uh, Larry. Before we leave, I I, I want to give you, you know, the last, um, you know, the last voice, right? And that anything for you that that you would like to share with the coaches, with uh, somebody like myself who didn't get a chance to connect with them. Uh, you, you, you know, with Jacques, anything that you would like to say or leave um, in Jacques, like, like awesome journey that you experienced, anything you'd like to leave with us, with everybody watching? Okay, <clears throat> two things, real quick. I'm going to talk about a regret first. My, one of my biggest regrets, because he was a pro and he was a coach, my biggest regret is that I never saw him coach a team. Mm. Mm. But my greatest satisfaction of jocks, <clears throat> and I try to do the same thing. We have to learn to embrace everybody. There are some coaches that have high, higher standards than others. Jocks didn't, jocks didn't discriminate. And, and so <clears throat> being in the Football Coach Association as an executive member. <clears throat> that that is my my passion. I want to see every coach in Bermuda be a good coach. Some of us are going to have a better standard than others. That that's okay. But but I want to be the guy. Someone drew to my attention a few days ago. I think Richard Thorpe told me that I must be in my fifth or sixth decade in coaching or football. And I says, yeah, and I like to think that when I leave this planet, someone's going to say that he had an impression mm. on me. That's jocks for me. He left an impression because he embraced everybody. Miss definitely. You, you, you know, it's, it's um, and first of all, I like, I appreciate you guys coming on and it's not easy because we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, losing a strong leader, into football you're looking at you know you, you know uefa instructor uh you're looking at a mentor you're looking at you know just a, you know, a technical job of the game uh we're talking about a young man that we lost early yeah because his age he wasn't that old we're talking about early right and i'm talking about early to the development of continued development of the game uh somebody that embraced the country somebody that embraced young people somebody that embraced our coaches our culture our climate um, this is the young man we're talking about, and I know it's a great mess, and I know that when you start thinking about those memories, we have to carry it on. And this is a part of our match day. We have to deliver. We have to keep performing high, set standards, the same standards that Jack actually put in front of. We have to continue to engage. Yeah, we have to take these experiences and, and, and put them into great memories and journeys. So I'm going to say to you, I appreciate your time. And to everybody out there, it's, it's very important. And the one message that, that Coach Larry that has given us is that, you know, we're going to have to grasp onto some pieces and, you know, be, be, be,
be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, you're going to have to get past your fears when you're going through these pieces of education. You're going to have to give something up, you know, to get more sacrifices are not only made by yourself, but by many to achieve a goal. So I'm going to say to uh, my guest today, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for carrying the voice and the memories of Jacques. And he was a great man. And this this has is a start of continue his journey. So I want to thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for being a part of Bascom's TV uh, being a part of Bascom's Corner and looking forward to hear more from you next time. Thank you very much, you guys. Good to see you. Thank you, David. Have a good evening. Okay, you guys. <laughs>